Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, injuries to key players, unprecedented fixture congestion for Crystal Palace, and other things are making this a difficult season. But we're still clinging on in a race for Europe. We're still doing well in the Europa Conference. And we're even attracting eyes from elsewhere at last. Could this be one of our last episodes in charge of Crystal Palace? Yes, hello and welcome along to part 94 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We are back today with Crystal Palace in 7th place in the league, albeit a very tight bunch behind the top two. And it's a very surprise lead to the Premier League table as well. Bournemouth, Wolves and Aston Villa all in the top four with the likes of United, Chelsea, Liverpool and Spurs making up the mid-table pack. And we've had an interview with one of those already and might well get another manager sacked today. We face Chelsea and Brighton in the Premier League, the rivals, another club to have lost a manager already. And of course, we are still going in the Europa Conference. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we've been getting on, as injuries continue to blight our momentum and certainly our performances, if not our results, then please do put a thumbs up on it. We're trying to juggle our squad as well as possible, but weeks like these where we have three Premier League games are starting to make it incredibly tough. Let's go and start by having a look at the schedule to see what's been going on since you were last with me. And of course, we've still not quite got our voice back yet, so I won't promise it will hold out for the episode. But you were with me last as we lost at Borussia Mönchengladbach and Liverpool. And I've got to be completely honest with you, the pattern of this season has basically continued. When we've gone away from home to a side that are better than us, we've lost. When we've played at home to a side in good form, we've drawn. And when we've played anyone else, we've normally won. So you were with me for Liverpool, we then drew one all at home to Wolves, who you've seen have started the season brilliantly. Marrera scored, we equalised from the kickoff with Jimmy Campbell, but that boy had a super game for them. After that, we won 5-0 at Zalgiris in a conference league, 2 for Vaknin, 3 for Chris Lewis. A 4-2 win followed away at Fulham, Guy Vaknin getting every single one of those goals before a 0-0 draw against the same opponent and a penalty victory in the Carabao Cup. We then followed up with a 3-0 defeat at City, no massive surprises there. Before the same scoreline in reverse against Lurven, it was Hurley, Campbell and Lewis with second half goals. A 3-1 win at home to Forest, two for Spasov and one for Adolfo. A 1-0 defeat at Newcastle after the international break. They had a late red card but we just couldn't get back into it. Before a 6-1 win at home to Shakhtar Soligorsk, it was a brilliant result. Two for Ribeiro, one for Barrett, one for Hagen, two for Lewis. And a big 1-0 win at home to Aston Villa. High-flying Villa. And the manner of it was even better. It was a first-minute goal from Chris Lewis, instantly followed by a stupid red card for Spasov for an awful lunging challenge. How many times do we see them early in big games now? Third-minute red card for him. But we clung on. We sat back. We time-wasted. We did all the dirty stuff. And it ended up being one of my favourite victories. Albeit, in the first 15 minutes, as well as those two incidents, we also got an injury for Guy Vaknin, which will put him out till about the League Cup quarter final. We've got a horrible spell of games coming up. We mentioned Chelsea today. Then it's the game away at the rivals who are flying under a new manager. Away to Feyenoord and later in the month, the Cup quarter final at Leeds Bournemouth. Away to Spurs under Pep Guardiola. Not us after a job interview. And at home to Liverpool, who by then might well be managerless as well. So Chelsea and Liverpool are the jobs we're looking at next. There are a couple in Europe that aren't quite as close to the sack. So let's just go and get into the first fixture. It is a big game at home to Chelsea. It is literally a game every three days at this point. And this midweek is going to be a real test of metal. We're without Spasov again, who has had two injuries and now a suspension this year. We're without Guy Vaknin again, who is just starting to find form. And we're without players that are really at full strength in terms of fitness. You can see... A few heavy match loads, a few players who aren't quite there on the condition, but we should just about be all right. 
We're going to bring Ribeiro back in for Guy Vaknin. We're going to take Spasov out for Jimmy Campbell. He struggled a bit this year playing so much football. And then on the bench, we're going to go for Tyrick Mitchell. And we're going to have to go for a sub keeper because Pucarino's injured as well. And they are the only 20 players who are fit. Of course, it's certainly not ideal when you're fighting on four fronts, but I'm not one for complaining. So apart from that, we're going to stick with a team that fought valiantly with 10 against Villa. It is Setford who is coming in between the sticks with Nelson and Luzon at fullback. Rodolfo and Ter, the centre-halves, just about keeping Barrett out at the minute. We've got Haynes and Campbell on the wings who come in for, of course, pass off the suspended left winger. We've got Gallagher alongside Rothwell. I've stuck with Gallagher because he's played quite well in there and Ward and Hurley just haven't. And then Ribeiro in for the injured guy Vaknin alongside inform Chris Lewis up front. Lots of quality. We've still got a few on the bench with the likes of Manquant returning back from injury. But not many players in great form there if we're being honest. So let's go and get into it. It's the big game at home to Chelsea. And with a derby to follow in three days time, this could be quite tricky. Well here we go then. It is a Chelsea side that is very much in need of regeneration. Because if this job does come up and we end up in it. It's going to be a bit of a predicament because James Fafana, Rice, I'm looking at Havertz and Scarlett as well. Scherder look probably hitting 30 as well now. It's a very experienced squad with a lot of real players for season 12. But the one man we've got to keep an eye out for is the goalkeeper. We could get the Chelsea manager sacked and end up in that job in a couple of weeks time. That's how important this game is for our future. We're going for our 4-4-2. We're going on the front foot. We're playing better. We've got more momentum. It's just whether we've got the legs and the quality without two of our star players. 10 minutes gone, it's been quiet so far. Let's see if we can come to life. Well, after 15 minutes, it is Chelsea on the front foot for the first time. And looking at the squad and the average age of their team, it's probably about getting through the first half and seeing if they tire. As Balde gets to the wing, finds Havertz, who cuts it back for Rice, into Scherder. Look, that's too easy, and it's a good goal. I don't know what the flag's up for. They're saying about offside, it looked fine to me. Was it a pass down the left, maybe? But I think this is going to be awarded. But wait and see. It is indeed. Goal awarded, 1-0 Chelsea. Not the best start. And again, whenever we've played these top sides this year, albeit mostly away from home so far, we've not been able to do well. Look at the stats. Five shots for Chelsea. It had been none for us. We're going to drop to balance for now. Get to half time, and we'll try and catch them out late on. Well, it stays 1-0 at half time, but we just seem to have stemmed the tide a little bit now. We're going to tell the lads we're not happy with them. It has been a poor performance, but we're losing our best creative player and our best goal scorer from last year. What do we really expect at this point? This is now about staying in the game. You can see again where we played with 10 men for, what, 87 minutes at the weekend. People are knackered from it. Ribeiro was supposed to be a sub and rested on Saturday or Sunday. He ended up playing 85 minutes because Vaknin got injured early. And now with an hour on the clock against an aging team, we're the ones who are running out of legs, so we're going to have to make wholesale changes here. Aldav is on as the playmaker. Ames will come off for Hagen. Up front, it'll be Ribeiro for Mancon, who's not really fit. And at right back, it will be Nelson off for Hurley. Again, at least most of those are motivated. We've got better characters in the squad, and we have to give credit for Dougie Friedman for that. But with an hour gone, I'm not confident we get something here. We've got Jimmy Campbell struggling for performance too. Luzon on a yellow card. It might be a tricky ending here. I'm not sure where the inspiration comes from, but I'll be hoping we get it from somewhere. Let's go and get through to the last stages of this game. At what point do we tick over and go positive? I'm not sure. We're going to encourage again. I think we're going to go for Jimmy Campbell off in a minute. Because again, he played 89 minutes yesterday. Or last weekend, sorry. As he heads away that cross there to Reese James. Gets into the box unopposed. Across the box to Havertz. It's two. And now we can make that sub. It's going to be Gordon Ward on, Gallagher out to the left. Brighton in three days time. And hopefully at least a few of the stars will be well rested. Well, no more highlights, thankfully. But another problem with this side, and I guess it's not a big problem. When we're playing the big teams, we're just not able to do it. And when we're playing the bottom half teams, we are. And I guess as long as we stay consistent against those sort of lesser sides in the division, no disrespect to them, it's probably all right for us. But... The moment we start slipping up in those games, these bronze become a big problem. Away to Brighton, that's one of those that's got a little bit more riding on it. They're in awful form. They had a red card themselves. But let's just see who's fit. Because in three days' time, it's not an easy question to answer. Well, it's Derby Day. It is Brighton versus Crystal Palace. And there is no real change on the injury front. 
Just Pucarino fighting back to fitness. He's not quite ready for today. And Spasov is obviously back from suspension. But for now, is not much to get us inspired. And with just three days rest, is not a particularly fit squad at the minute. So we might have to rotate two or three. Or well, two other changes in the spine of the team. It is Barrett in at centre half for Ter. It is Ward in in centre midfield for Conor Gallagher. We've got to be aware that we've got another game on Thursday. That's against Feyenoord in the Europa Conference League. And that one's quite important for our qualification chances. So with that and then Blackburn at home, we've got to rest people a little bit. Because at the moment, we're not in that top eight in the Europa Conference. Feyenoord are top. They're a side we've got to beat. We've got them and we've got Valerenga. And if we win them, we avoid that last 32 stage, which is great. So let's go and get through to the team selection. You know what the changes are for this one. Spasov back in to strengthen us on the left. Warden Barrett in in two changes, I've decided. Let's go and get into it away at the Amex. This is a big game for Palace fans. It's a big game for us trying to stay in that pack with the top seven. I'm not sure if Europe's possible this year, but at the moment, we've got to stay on the front foot. They've got a decent side of Brighton. Of the real players, Van Heck, Eight Nuri, Daniel Everson in goal, and Tyler Morton in midfield. On the bench, have they got any of the ones they've nicked off us in previous years? I don't think so. They've beaten us to a few deadline day signings, but I don't recognise them in this squad. They've still got Tarek Lamptey on the bench, which is an interesting one. But let's just go and get into it. Ask the lads to prove a point. Fair play to them. Most of them are motivated here. Let's hope that shows on the pitch. Without a red card, please, this time. We've had a few too many of them this season. We're just five minutes on the clock here as we pick the ball up in midfield with Ward, who finds Spasov, who when he has played has been brilliant. He's still got young player of the month in the Premier League, despite his red card and his suspension. So we know he's pretty good as it's into Ribeiro, who has missed an absolute sitter. Six gone, it's still nil-nil. It probably should have been one. As we're back with a free kick for Setford early on in this game. A bit of an active start, but ain't Nori able to bring it down for Brighton. It's into midfield for Veron. And he will try and switch the play. Instead, go short to Morton. Big ball over to Rodriguez. It's caught in behind our fullback here. They get to the byline, Brighton. Cut it back. The flex off Barrett and it's off the line. It's almost a disastrous moment for the man coming in. But we get away with it. One great chance at both ends. Nil-nil is still the score. 15 minutes gone here. We've got a good team out today. It's just whether they stay fit or not. And it's just whether we're able to find form. In front of goal, we've not had much from a Ribeiro recently. And of course, we're backing it out. It's a hammer blow as Haynes carries it forward. Out to Spasov on the left, who beats his man. Lewis can't get there, so it's cleared as far as Luzon. He goes back into Ward. Chips over the top to Lewis. He's got a man in the middle in Ribeiro. And they're the ones he scores in form. He's put it straight at a keeper from four or five yards. And you've got to hit the target. I'm not sure why it's not counted as a shot on target there. Seems to be a bit of a delay in the stats. But we've been okay in this match. We've just not been able to show that cutting edge. You can see Brighton having more of the chances at the minute. And they've got a corner kick on a stroke of half time. It would be terrible to concede here. As Haynes heads up, Spasov loses out though. Nelson gets it away to Lewis who flicks up. Not really got it anywhere though. And Morton will bring it down. He finds Jimenez and Katara. The voice is going now. We better get a bit of a, a breather soon. As Spasov clears to Lewis and Ribeiro. Here we go. Up towards Lewis again. He's nicked it off the defender. He gets in behind Perez. He's one-on-one. -on -one and he dinks it over the goalkeeper. The one remaining fit striker in form. And Chris Lewis in the 44th minute with an awful dance to celebrate has made it 1-0 to Palace. What a time to nick it. What a time to get on the front foot. We're going to say to the lads, you've got to win it for the fans. We're going to get into the second half. Well, it's been a quiet start to the second period as we're back with a corner just before the hour mark. And Adam Barrett has put one in the top corner. Now, last time he scored a goal from a header, from a set piece in a video, he got sent off a few minutes later. Do not do that today. It's been a very good hour for us here. We're going to drop to balance. Just try and make sure we see this out now. With 25 to go, I'll make a couple of changes. Not too many. Hagen on for Hames, who is knackered. I'm going to go for Ribeiro off and Mancon on. It's just about rotation at this point. We've got a lot of those games that are tight where you can't do a lot. So when we are two down like the last game or we're two up like this one, we do have to try and be clever with it. And I'm not sure whether it's going to work overall, but today so far it has. I'm going to bring Hurley on for Ward in central midfield. He's just starting to struggle a bit now. Luzon at left back is a problem, but I'll just give him a complete rest on Thursday. I'm looking at Rodolfo on the yellow, maybe Dante for him. I feel a bit bad doing that because he is the leader of the defence, but 
I don't want to get caught out. We've got 15 minutes to go. We've still got one sub and one sub break remaining. Do I even take off Lewis and bring on a holding midfielder? Not something I often do, and I'm not going to do it here. It will be Rothwell off, and on for him will be Aldav. We've got seven minutes remaining. It's been an exemplary away performance, and the second half has been so controlled, it's been so composed, and it's going to finish with a 2-0 win. A great result away at Brighton, and it continues the pattern of the season. When we're playing sides that we're better than, we are consistently getting results. When we're playing sides we're worse than, we're consistently not getting results. You can't ask for more than that from this team. It's consistent. We normally know what we're going to get. And we're going to finish the episode exactly where we started. In 7th place, already 14 clear of relegation. And comfortably above some very big sides. Let's go and get through to the schedule. See when we're going to be back. We'll see if any jobs have popped up. Because we're still above some very big teams. We've got matches picked for TV. More money in. You can't complain about that. The finance is looking very good here after a summer of European football. Now let's go and have a look at the job centre. Are there any of them about? We've got Sevilla in the Spanish La Liga. Let's have a look at how they're getting on. They have been, oh wow, they've been a lower mid-table club for a few years now. So not really the prospect we were hoping for. In England, nothing apart from Brighton again. Holland, the national job has popped up. But again, I'm not looking for international management at this stage. Some very big clubs in slightly smaller nations, but I don't feel that's the right move for now. If we go over to the job security, you'll see that it's still very similar to before. Liverpool insecure with Jurgen Klopp. A few of the others like Milan again. We only lost out on that job in the summer. Valverde already potentially on his way out. And Frankfurt, who we went for last year. Daniel Farker struggling there. So a few jobs that may well crop up this season. I don't think we're going to get one in the summer. So if it crops up and we get the chance to get one mid-year, we'll just go on and take it. But a very good episode. We got the result we needed. And we kept the fans on side with a rival's win. We should be going through in the Conference League. We should be doing all right in the Premier League. I mean, the Carabao Cup quarterfinal is going to be tricky. But ultimately, it's not a priority of my season. What we're going to come back for, though, I think is probably FA Cup third round weekend and a very big game against Manchester United. Another one that could be decisive. Another little spell where things could get tricky. If you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this one, a big win and a big defeat in two different games, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments where you think we'll finish, whether we can stay in that race for Europe, will we be able to score on a big conference league or cup run, and more importantly perhaps, is a big job offer going to come up? We'll wait and see as the season goes on. If you want to find out the answer to all those questions too, then subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We've got daily FM23 content from two long-term stories and Touchwood. The voice does seem to be slightly coming back now. So hopefully there'll be no further slip-ups, no more Sean Dyche gravelly voices, and we will be able to enjoy the rest of this year at Palace or elsewhere if the opportunity arises. In the meantime, though, before we're back in a couple of days' time, the Build a Nation save will be back tomorrow. You can find the latest season, a monumental one, and a historic one up in the eye above. There's also links there to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and the blog story as well. But thank you very much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you back here next time. For big news at Crystal Palace, or maybe a job offer from elsewhere.